Hello and welcome to lesson 7.1 in the Alice tutorial series. Today we're going to be taking on one of the most important topics in learning how to use Alice and making some cool animations, and that is going to be the vehicle property. The vehicle property is one of those properties we saw uh, way back in lesson, I think it was 7.2, maybe, or 2.2, uh, maybe 2.1, and I told you we would get back to it, and here we are. The vehicle property is important enough to be a standalone lesson. It essentially allows you to attach two objects together. Really useful when you have maybe one uh, one object riding another object, such as a knight riding a horse, or when you have one object holding another option, uh, another object, like if you had a nice knight wielding a sword, or when we get into camera controls, having the camera mirror a certain object on the screen, there's some really neat things you can do if you master the vehicle property. So let's go ahead and get started with lesson 7.1 and address exactly what the vehicle property is. To get started looking at the vehicle property, we're going to need a new Alice world, and I've just created a standard grass world here. The next thing we're going to need to do is add an object, so let's click the Add Objects button. We're going to pull, uh, again, from the Animals category, and I think what I want to have on the screen here is the Turtle class. So I'm going to take the turtle, drag him onto the screen, resize him a little bit, and orient him so that he's facing the left. So something about like this. Now before we do anything with the vehicle property, let's go ahead and animate this turtle so that he's walking to the left. Now I'm not going to mess with animating the legs. That's something that if you're doing a full animation you should do, but for this example we're not going to spend the time animating the legs. But We're going to have the turtle move forward by three meters. This is something you've seen before. And let's slow down the animation just a little bit. So to do that, we'll use duration and have this run in a duration of three seconds. And let's take a look at how that looks. Perfect. So we have a simple turtle pretty much moving across the screen. Now we're going to add another object. So let's scroll through here and see what we want to add. Uh, let's add the uh, cute little penguin from earlier lessons. So here we go. We've got a penguin in our scene now. And my vision is to have the penguin ride the turtle across the screen. So in the Add Object screen right here, I can take the turtle, kind of find that intersection of, the, of where he's on the turtle. I'm going to take him and orient him so he's facing the same way as the turtle. In fact, uh, rather than play it by ear, I'm going to right click on the turtle, use my methods, and select Penguin Orient to Turtle so that I can make sure they're facing the exact same direction. And let's raise the elevation a little bit so that he's on the turtle's back. And that looks about right. Let's go ahead and check our quad view. And from our quad view, I I can get the uh, penguin centered, his height looks about right, everything there looks good. So I have the penguin riding the turtle. When I run this animation, I want the penguin to move forward with the turtle. If I hit play now, you can see the penguin gets left behind by the turtle. The turtle is moving, but we haven't given any commands to the penguin. Now without the vehicle property, I could take the penguin, and I could tell the penguin to move forward three meters over three seconds, and it would have, well, I guess I, I would have to put that in a do-together statement, so even that looks a little bit wonky, um, so we could put this in a do-together statement and see how that looks, and you know, that looks about right, but it's incredibly difficult. What eventually would happen? is I would have to have two lines of code for for everything. And if I eventually wanted a bunch of animals riding the turtle, I would have to have a line of code mimic the turtle for every object. And there's a much easier way to do it. 
In my code, uh, I'm going to put the turtle back by himself and delete all the penguin code. The turtle is moving forward three meters. I'm going to go to the penguin and select properties. On the properties tab, the vehicle is set to the world. But since I want the penguin to move with the turtle, I'm going to set the vehicle for the penguin to the turtle. This is an indication to Alice that you want the penguin to mimic all the movements of the turtle. By setting the vehicle of the penguin to turtle, the turtle move command now also impacts the penguin. If I were to add more commands in the future, such as having the turtle turn, let's see, let's have the turtle turn left by a quarter revolution so that he'll face the camera, and we'll do that over a duration of two seconds, you'll see that the penguin will mimic every movement that we give the turtle. In essence, I've created the penguin riding the turtle. If I were to add another object now, let's go ahead and add a mouse, and take the mouse and move him so that he's kind of with the turtle, and raise the elevation just a little bit, and we'll actually Put him on the turtle's head, I think. Let's go ahead and get the mouse centered on the turtle's head. And again, once I get the mouse about where I think he's going to go, I'll go ahead and check this on the quad view. So let's hit quad view and see that the mouse, yeah, is indeed on the turtle's head. The height looks about right. He's not quite facing the same way, but we're in a good, we're in a good place here. Hit play, and the mouse doesn't move. The turtle and the penguin move, but the mouse is stationary. That's because the default vehicle for the mouse is going to be the world, and we're not telling the world to do anything. Just like I did with the penguin, I can go into the mouse, select properties, and set the vehicle to the turtle, and the entire turtle. And now both the penguin and the mouse are sharing the actions of the turtle. So when the turtle moves forward and turns left, both the mouse and the penguin are going along for the ride. So this example here provides a really good example of entire objects being set to vehicles of one another. Sometimes you're going to want to use vehicle properties on subparts and not entire objects. And this is incredibly prevalent when you have people or objects being held by another object. I'm going to disable this code right here. And I'm going to add two more objects that I want. If you're not in the people gallery, go to the scroll over to the people gallery. And I'm going to add this coach from one of our previous lessons. Let's position the coach so that his arms are more in a downward position so he, he looks normal. So we'll rotate the coach. Grab his arm, affect subparts. Perfect. And we've got the coach about where we want him. And the next thing we're going to want to do, uh, excuse me, the next thing we're going to want to do is go to sports. And let's go ahead and add a basketball to our coach. I want the coach to be holding a basketball. So let's take this object, raise the elevation, and roughly put it in the coach's hands. Now, again, if I were making this a final animation, I would position it so that uh, maybe his hand looked to be gripping the, the basketball a little bit better, but that will work for our example. Let's take a look at quad view, and it looks good from all the different angles. So we have a coach holding a basketball. And of course, if I wanted the basketball to move with, move with the coach, I would select the basketball, go to properties, and set the vehicle property of the basketball to the coach. So when I do movements with the coach, we'll take the coach here and use a turn method, and I'm going to turn the coach to the left by one revolution over three seconds. And you'll see the coach turn around, and because the basketball is set as a, the vehicle of the basketball is set to the coach, we'll see the basketball moves with our coach perfectly fine. So that's pretty good. 
The problem is, if I move just part of the coach, the basketball isn't going to move with it anymore. So let's say I were to take the coach, and instead of moving the entire coach, I just go to his left, his upper body, then his left arm, and I want his left arm to turn forward by one quarter revolution. So we'll disable the old coach uh, code here. And so this code is just going to have the left arm be raised. Oh, and I need a roll command, not a turn command. Let's right click this and you can, uh, let's see. Now, sometimes you can right click on it and it will change to a roll command. But in this case, let's go ahead and take left arm roll. And we're going to roll it to its left by a quarter revolution. Let's see if that gets us the desired effect. Close, but we want it to roll to the right. There we go, that's what we were looking for right there. Now I've got the coach's arm moving, but right now the basketball isn't moving. That's because the basketball is set to the entire coach and not the entire coach is moving. If you have one object being held by another, you want to be a little more specific at what part is holding the object. Let me go over to my basketball option, or my object here, select properties, and instead of setting the vehicle to just the coach, I want to let Alice know that not only is the vehicle the coach, but it's the upper body, the left arm, and just the hand of the left arm. The vehicle is now specifically the hand of the coach. Now, if the hand is to move, the basketball will go with it. If I hit play now, I can see the basketball moves up. If I were to go back to the coach, select method, and let's go ahead and move the coach's right arm. So I'm going to select right arm, and I'm going to roll it to the left by a quarter revolution. Since the object is only in the left hand of the coach. When the right hand moves, it checks to see if there's anything attached to that subpart. And there's nothing attached to this hand subpart or this arm subpart, so the basketball doesn't move. But when I tell the coach to move his arm, it checks all the subparts attached to that arm. The left arm has the hand attached, and the hand is where the basketball is. When you have one object being wielded by another, it's really important to make sure that the vehicle is set to the specific part that's holding the object, not just the entire object, or you'll get some really weird side effects. So there you have it. That is a really simple vehicle uh, property lesson right there. Hopefully it was understandable. It's a really powerful tool. You'll probably use it in just about all of your programs going forward or anytime you have even a semi-complicated animation. Uh, you'll see the vehicle property being adjusted for many different objects. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Lesson 7.1 Challenge Program and see if you've really got vehicle properties mastered. <laughs> So now that you've had a chance to see how the vehicle property is used in your Alice programs, now's your opportunity to do the Lesson 7.1 Challenge program. And what I have here is a little scene that I set up, and I'll reset it here in a second so you can see it. But I've used a billboard to create a high-res background for my scene, and then I've added some objects in the foreground to give my scene a little bit more depth. And what you're going to be doing is animating a knight holding a sword, riding a horse. Now this is going to require a lot of the skills that you've learned up to this point. The horse himself will have to be animated, so you'll have to create a walking animation for the horse. It's a little bit more challenging than you would find for a person because there's four legs instead of two, but still something doable. You're going to have to position a knight so that he's sitting on the horse properly, or at least what looks like properly. And as the horse moves, uh, I've made my knight swing his arms a little bit. The knight is also going to be wielding a sword, so you're going to have a couple vehicle properties that you have to worry about, such as having the knight set to the vehicle of a horse, and having the sword set to the vehicle of 
the hand of the knight. And the animation that I came up with looks like what you have here on the screen. The knight's going to slowly stride across the screen from left to right. The horse will pause. It's going to look at the camera, raise his sword, and then ride off the screen. Something like that will work, um, but there is some vehicle properties that you'll have to mess with, and the animation does take some time. You'll have to use incremental development and slowly build the animation as you go, because more than the other challenge programs we've done in the past, there really are a lot of moving parts on this one. You'll find though once you get going, it'll be pretty simple. You just take it step by step. So that is the lesson 7.1 challenge program as always. If you have any questions about your animation or having trouble getting anything that you're trying to do to work, uh, leave those questions in the comments and I can certainly help you out. Thank you so, so much for watching the Alice tutorial series and have a great day.